Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you with another video. All right, so the Utah game, Bron out. I gave you a video earlier today letting you know of my concerns with this game. And without LeBron James, I'm afraid it's going to be a tough sledding going up against Utah in Utah. I don't know how to look at this other than to say the protest continues, everybody. I, I'm just winging it in regards to what I think is happening rather than me having any information or inside knowledge. But I don't know, man. I just think that LeBron James is pretty over some of this crap, man. I, I think that. I really think that. Jeannie talking about, you know, basically Ham's going to keep his job. And he, you know, taking the pressure off of him essentially to, to, to more or less, you know, make changes, I guess, or, or rather than stop making changes as it pertains to our lineup and just kind of do things that, that, that really will uh, lead to success for certain. I think the pressure on him was good for the team because it essentially gave them hope that things could get better from his perspective. When you tell him he has a job, regardless of what happens, he doesn't have to be better. And when that information released, um, I was disappointed. Everybody who wants Ham fired is definitely disappointed. And at this point, I'd imagine some of the players are disappointed. Those who want to see him fired too. Those who want to see him be better. Those who want to see their roles improve, improve etc. So I don't know if there's any correlation between Bron's absence tonight and that. But uh, he does have some type of ankle issue. And, you know, we did see him roll his ankle in the last game. And we also saw him kind of have a, a shoulder thing as well that he played through. So maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's something. I'm just speculating, obviously. But, you know, it's one of those situations where the fans aren't all against Ham. Not everybody's against Ham. But it's gotten to a point where analysts are pointing out his, his mistakes casuals are pointing out his pockets and it's just getting to a point where the whole thing is just i guess people believe that removing ham is a solution to all our problems i don't believe that but i think it is uh i think it's something that you just have to keep over his head you don't necessarily have to fire him but you definitely don't come out and tell him that he's going to be able to keep his job and no matter what is everything's going to be fine for the rest of the season that's just the wrong approach for a guy whose performance has not lived up to the standards of the timeline now if you had a reset button to hit on your timeline then of course you could go forward with a, a developing coach developing players and you could take your time so if that's what the lakers are planning on doing and they want you know darvin ham to be their coach for the next 10 years without firing him so that they can have the reset in place with a developing coach that's that's their prerogative but i don't know that that works for lebron james and i am concerned that he's um, in a position where he's at a crossroads where he has to figure out whether or not he wants to stay here and potentially never win another championship or leave here and potentially have an opportunity at several, depending on where he goes. You know, when we say the, you could be anywhere in the world, but you chose to be with me, that's LeBron James. He could be anywhere in the world, but he chose to be with the Lakers. And I just think that we've lost sight of that. Maybe we don't value him like we're supposed to right now. Maybe we're not all in for Braun anymore taking for granted the fact that he's since he's been here for six years I guess we expect he's going to retire here no doubt I don't know if that's the way people are looking at it but you know I think LeBron also put a little bit of salt on the whole situation when he he comes out and tells people that he's going to leave here no matter what when his kid comes into the league I think that also has something to do with why people don't feel so pressed to make moves to meet his timeline in that front office um Again, just speculating, but like, I think Bron may have played that the wrong way when he essentially said, you know, family first. I'm gonna go <laughs> go play with my kid. It's like, yo, you know how much value you hold in this place. You tell people you're leaving. Yeah, that ain't gonna sit well with people, because they're in a, a, a back against the wall type situation because they look bad for trading you. But they're probably in the best interest of their team to consider what it looks like when they do, versus when it looks like when you walk. And they have to rebuild without that value. So unless we could do some type of sign and trade in the event that takes place, which I don't see would be the case, given the fact that he has an opt out uh, and can go wherever he wants. I just feel like that's a very bad situation for the L.A. Lakers. And they, uh, subsequently could be a, a bit of a tug of war there, an unseen 
unspoken kind of tug of war. So that's what my speculation shows me, man. LeBron came out and said he could be leaving to go play with his kid. And Jeannie came out and said, I'm not firing that coach. It's not getting you far as you want to go in this regular season thus far. With this marathon that he seems to think we could throw away games or something. I don't know if I'm reading into what he's saying properly or not. But essentially, the regular season don't mean nothing. Just get Let's get to the playoffs. So Jeannie's all on board. <clears throat> She's at peace with the fact that he got us to the Western Conference Finals, won the in-season tournament, and now is willing to sit through uh, – through real ineptitude and bad, bad coaching, uh, in hopes that it'll get us to the to the to the finish line. And I just look at it like this: there are a million rookie coaches you could bring in for development. Uh, so you know, Darvin needs not think his coaching position uh, is just absolutely safe, uh, regardless of how the team performs and how his his uh, product looks on that floor, man. So that's that's my point of view. I'm. I'm I'm a little frustrated. I don't really know where my team is. I think people are kind of cool with how things are going. I mean, we're already kind of betraying what it ultimately means to be a Laker when you consider the fact that we raised the in-season tournament banner. Now, I'm not a I'm not sure. You know, I'm kind of on the fence about that because I know that the put the, the league put a lot of pressure on us to do that. And um you know, it's one of those things where it's like if you're going to win it, no matter what team it is, we want this to work, et cetera, et cetera. But I just think when you're the Lakers, it kind of betrays the brand when you got Kobe's footage out there saying we don't hang nothing but championship banners. That's something we live by. You know, we really we really consider that. So it's one of those things where it's just like that's already a sign that the Lakers are kind of just doing things the cool way as opposed to the strict way for which we expect our our product to be strict and 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 aligned with the standards that have already been set for many many decades so i don't know man i don't know we'll see how this season it plays out but uh if i don't like what i see on this channel i'll start talking about some things differently as it pertains to what i think his leadership is really about around here man but Sometimes it is best to just be patient and let things play themselves out. And, you know, you never know. Maybe we get it together. But I just feel like when when it appears people have checked out, you really can't afford to do that. Now, when people seem to be all in despite in spite of losing and are intent on turning things around together, I think that looks a certain way. And that's not what I'm seeing. That's the problem. That's not what I'm seeing. If I believe Bron and AD and all these guys were all in on Darvin Ham getting better and working with him to be better, I would want to wait it out. But the signs of this having a having a situation been where Darvin has lost the locker room is really in place right now for me. And I don't know how you regain a locker room. I've never heard of a coach regaining a locker room. So this would be a first in that regard if that is indeed what I'm seeing. And with our superstars giving me you know, 10 and 13 points in the last game, and now one of them ain't out there for a big game against the Utah Jazz, who's won 10 out of the last 12 games. I mean, it seems like this team has always had the identity of showing up for big games. But Bron, he's missed games against the Timberwolves, who are number one seed. He's missing game against the Utah Jazz, which is a, you know, de facto number one seed when you consider how they've been lately. So it's like, I don't know. I just feel like he's protesting. I feel like AD is on board with the protest. And I think Jeannie needs to get a whiff of, the, of what's going on there. She needs to, she needs to smell what, what, what LeBron is cooking. And uh, not take the guy for granted. And uh, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I'm looking at this correctly. If I am not, it wouldn't be the first time. But I just tell you what I see there, man. I tell you what the tea leaves are showing me. And I just want the Lakers to get to a point where we're acting like Lakers, man. Really. Just acting like Lakers, bro. Bringing in people that, that want to be not only here, but want to fight for making this thing what it's supposed to be. You know? And so I don't, I don't know what that means as it pertains to bringing in new talent. If we have that opportunity to bring in, uh, you know, dogs, so to speak, some, some, some new reinforcements, but... If people think DeJounte Murray's the answer, I'm, I'm on board with it. I like DeJounte a lot. I always have. I think he's going to be a heck of a player. Uh, giving up 
Austin Reeves and, and players like that, I'm not really sure about for that trade. But it looks like the Hawks ain't gonna ain't gonna capitulate to what we need, and it looks like we're in a bad space if we don't get something going. That's what it looks like to me. So I don't know, man. We'll watch this game tonight at six thirty in Utah, and we'll report back to you. See if there's anything positive to report. But honestly, the Utah Jazz are rolling so well. Even if we were playing on a string 100%, there's a good chance we have trouble with this squad, If let alone lose um, when we're not playing well. So I know no trade is to be expected for at least another 48 hours since we don't technically have the ability to make trades, but I would love to hear of something being done and now they're waiting for that time to come around. Because I think that would instill a bit of energy into this team for which we could use we can really use but you don't want to just throw your assets around uh just just to get a moment uh of 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 energy you definitely don't play your 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 organization that way so Rob Lincoln's earned my trust if you know if not the word trust then my benefit of the doubt and over the last couple of seasons I've seen some things that I wanted to see done from the GM's perspective um including the last couple of trades being ones I've been happy with so now whether or not Darvin Ham has then taken those those decisions uh, on the roster and made them look as good as they're supposed to look is an entirely different conversation but at least putting together the team we've we've done things we've been pleased with so I'm hopeful he'll do that again man Um, you know as they say you're only as good as your last move and your last move was good Rob so that's what we're rolling with man hopefully that that can be something that you continue to do for us and um you know, hopefully Darwin can can kind of just get get it together. I'm I'm really hopeful that he can regain my faith and the team's faith and the fans' faith as a whole. Cause it's hard, man. It's hard to just want to believe and you see a bunch of stuff that you don't like and don't believe in, and it's a lot of pressure. So you you know he may not be handling it all that great. The players are kind of checked out because you know trade time around LA this time of year is always check out time for everybody been going through this since B.I. was on the team so you know that's another thing I I don't know if the NBA can tweak the trade deadline a little bit or kind of do something different with how they handle the trades but we really do have problems with our team checking out every year around this time when guys think they could be moved it, they just start playing poorly they start thinking they're not on the team and start thinking for self and all types of stuff that really does affect how this team competes and um on one hand, you love the trade rumors and, and, and what it brings to the table as it pertains to doing content for people like myself and for fans who are really excited about player movement. But on the other hand, it really does suck for the players and the coaches and everybody themselves who are trying to keep a cohesive unit and constantly having to deal with the idea of having to uproot themselves and their families to other cities at absolute random. It just, you know, it's a lot of give and take. It ain't really all that great for everybody so if there's a way to solve that or a way to tweak that to make it better for the teams um, especially teams like the Lakers who are always in those rumors regardless if we're trying to make moves or not I think that would go a long way in making better product happen out there on that floor so yeah man that's where I'm at with it Laker game 630 I'm I'm not so excited about this game I would be if I thought my team was going to be a a solid unit but right now I'm just kind of like feel like I'm walking the plank you know what I mean (laughs) <laughs> like like we about to head off into the ocean and, and against our will man with knives to our backs type stuff you know what i'm saying it's it's not looking good and so um this is why i wanted genie to keep that pressure on darvin man you you can execute your situation however you want to but coming out telling the guy who's underperforming that he needs to relax and that his job is safe it's gonna it, 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 you you have to wonder if it's going to play out positively for the for the product itself especially when it seems like the team is on the other end of that uh with a different approach to wanting to see their team get better and so uh you know what i'm saying the roster has to be used better period it has to be utilized better the stuff we're running has to be more effective our defense has to improve especially around the perimeter our offense has to improve from player to player to player to player and uh that's all on everybody darvin and the players themselves to to put together a good position of systems uh, and then execute those systems correctly uh, versus the talent against us. So practice, I'm telling you, is the solution. 
practice is the solution for everybody's problems. At the end of the day, if y'all practice double the way you do right now, I'm pretty sure you'll see a better result. I really believe that. It just, it just comes down to the better teams in this league put more into the time away from the regular season games in the practice and into the scrimmages. And you work out your problems there. You work out your rotations there. You work out your strategies there. And if that isn't the, the motto around here, then this is going to be what you get. So that's the problem I think is in place, and I'm ready to see that problem erased and guys getting back to what it takes to win basketball games. So that's where my head is, man. Hopefully we see a trade very soon. I'd love to welcome DeJounte Murray into the fold uh, at this point, and uh, I don't necessarily want to trade Austin Reeves to do it. And I'm still on that train as well, so... Yeah, man, from what I understand, that 29 pick is is almost definitely going out if DeJounte comes in. I don't think we can acquire DeJounte based on what I'm listening to without throwing that pick in. But we'll see if, if, if Rob Plink is able to find a way. I would love for him to get rid of Gabe Vincent's contract. If you want to make BDF happy specifically, get that thing off our books, please. And, uh, yeah, that's that's really where I'm at with that, man. So that's pretty much what I got to say. My name is BDL44. I thank y'all for watching. I'm out.